There are no generators, there is no Slade. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society, these are four stories of lost, banned, or unmade pieces of cartoon history. It's Juice and Jam time. But first, this video is sponsored by Dollar Shave Club. Keeping this ping pong shaped head so well groomed is expensive. That's why Dollar Shave Club mails what I need to my house. It's more than just shaving. Body wash, hair styling, toothpaste, and other grooming products in general mailed to you. If you click the link below or go to dollarshaveclub.com slash rebeltaxi, you can get the daily essentials starter set for just $5 and free shipping. This includes an executive handle, enough razor cartridges for a month, Dr. Carver's Easy Shave Butter, Wonder Calming Body Cleanser, and One Wipe Charlie's. The packet doesn't say what part of the body you wipe, but the sponsor informs me it's for your rear. Oh, please tell me this butler mascot smashes through my wall offering wipies whenever I'm in the bathroom. Again, click the link in the description or go to dollarshaveclub.com slash rebeltaxi to get your starter set for $5. Going on eBay is quite the journey through obscure products like this DVD. Not only does this Polaroid look cursed, almost nothing came up when searching the title Force 5 Masters. No relation to the Hot Wheels cartoon Battle Force 5 or the failed Fox Force 5 pilot. I was eager to order it and was greeted with among the cheapest DVD menu screens ever. Both options play the same footage, which here it opens to a crude CGI city and oh, did they just steal footage from the 2001 Justice League cartoon? Oh no, what you're looking at is unique footage made for this DVD. To protect the Earth, the five masters endure special training at Mount Salark in Korea to obtain supernatural power and speed from the immortal Grand Master to be the new generation of heroes. Look at that art style. No doubt this had to be made by maybe Bruce Tim, Warner Brothers, or one of their animation studios. Could this be a lost Bruce Tim verse cartoon? Sadly, no, it's not even an episode. It's only a four minute long animated trailer for a product I'll talk about soon. The trailer has the announcer describing these five martial artists who use their nanotechnology to create a latex suit. You could have just changed in the bathroom. Once suited up, the Force 5 Masters proceed to beat the shit out of Bojack Horseman's abusive family, and afterwards, they summon their Lightspeed spacecraft, taking them to a horse planet where they invade their colony in a genocidal retaliation. The supernatural heroes defeat the army of evil alien horses to fight the last battle with the evil king. There could be tons of horse factions on this planet. How do they know they're the ones that invaded you? And now the masters come out of nowhere and kill the horse emperor. Uh, nut. Magically, this de-terraforms the land for some reason, and the horse guy is now friendly, I guess. Was it mind control? They don't say. Afterwards, the humans reteach the horse kids their peaceful ways after they beat up their emperor. They also hand out a free Force 5 Masters DVD. You better pray that's region free. The Masters fuck off back to Earth where they train tiny kid clones of themselves, or at least kids with the same crappy hairstyles. I guess whoever contracted this cartoon requested, hey, kids like crazy anime hair, can you give them anime hair? And that's where the four minutes of animation ends. Yes, this DVD has four minutes of content as it reveals these are mascots for the CPC Martial Arts, a franchise of dojos for kids trying to sell their crappy training CD. Yeah, sweet hat, bro. Forty bucks? Get out of here! Well, I'm in this deep. So what's another 40 bucks? I tried this CD-ROM on an old PC, but apparently you need a passcode to access the program. There's an email to receive one, but I've gotten no reply after a year. I'm not missing much, just a CGI training program. Tiger Mask, Asia Champion, Nationality Korea, Gender Male, Age 20, Job Description Basketball Player. 
Force 5 Masters is not a long-lost Bruce Timm cartoon. It's merely a promotional ad for a failed media franchise that likely commissioned WB Animation. Any websites using the Force 5 branding have not been updated in years and are littered with beautiful vector art of barefoot warriors without toes. This is the opposite of a foot fetish. Well, at least I have one of the few copies of this thing. Asia Champion Anyone deep into video games has had the disappointment of a game they want to play not release in their country. Just look at Australia, their gaming market is still in Prohibition era. Meanwhile, here in America, we never got the chance to play the two Cowboy Bebop video games, despite the anime being a huge success here and said to have a better English dub than the original Japanese vocals. There's two games, Cowboy Bebop on PlayStation 1, a 3D flight shooter like Star Fox 64, except crappy. So basically, every Star Fox game that isn't on the 64. And the second game is Cowboy Bebop Serenade of Reminiscence on PS2, a 3D beat-em-up. We know they're unreleased here, but what I was curious to know is if a lost US dub was ever recorded before the release was denied. While at Comic-Con, I got to question Spike Spiegel himself, Steve Blum. He does remember recording for one game, but he doesn't remember which one, though he did say the one he recorded for never got released here because, quote, the game engine was too old. So I'm thinking it was the earlier PlayStation 1 game. Again, I'm assuming it's the 1998 PS1 game, but Cowboy Bebop premiered on American TV in 2001 when the PS2 was already out. Why try to release a game on a previous generation of consoles? And think about this, just a few years later in 2005 was when the PS2 Bebop game released in Japan. According to a Did you know Gaming video, the publisher Bandai had announced a Western release until they kept pushing it back, but what they didn't know is if any US voice actors recorded anything. However, in 2004, Bandai updated the game's official English website to change the shipping date from Fall 2004 to Fall 2005, and at the end of 2005, updated it once more to remove the date altogether. How much of the game was localized before its cancellation remains a mystery. We attempted to contact several voice actors who worked on Bebop to see if Bandai ever approached them to work on the game, but we received no response. It takes a while to redub a fully voiced game, and for it to release after 2005 would be bad timing when the PlayStation 3 was coming out just one year later. This PS2 game would be seen as outdated by then. Because this lines up with Steve Blum claiming the game was outdated, Bandai announcing a US release before cancelling it, and at a time when next-gen consoles were coming, we can bet on there being an English recording out there for the PS2 Bebop game in a vault somewhere, or at least just for Spike's audio. Why let that go to waste? You can rebuy retro games from that era on modern consoles now. Why not finally release this game translated in America, it's two more pieces of Bebop we're missing out on. Granted, these games were regarded as mediocre, but hear me out. It's Bebop. During a trip to Los Angeles, I visited the Pele Center for Media, a museum for movies, music, and TV. Inside, they had an old computer lab filled with a crappy, outdated database of random recordings donated by TV networks. There's some stuff in here not available anywhere else, and what did I search up? The Rocket Power Pilot. This is Ocean Park, California, home to being the coolest buds around. Too bad school gets in the way. His life will be perfect. All we can do is hang out. Obviously, recording was forbidden, but here is where I could watch the Lost Rocket Power Pilot or Rocket Beach as it was gonna be called. It's a basic pilot where the skater boy Twister was narrating camcorder footage of his friends shredding while introducing them. A lot of people who've seen this speculated Twister could have been the main character, or just the narrator since he's the one who holds the camera on the show. But instead, Otto became the main character since he's so likable. The pilot is not online as of now, but the footage was reused for the series intro. Rocket Beach would have the same stylized color scheme while Otto has these demonic eyes resembling the killing joke joker. Not a good choice. There's also a snippet of the pilot recovered from Nick.com's website back in the 90s and that's it. Worth finding? Nah. 
but the way that it was stylized was so strange, I can't imagine a full series looking like this. Anyway, during my time in this museum, I was searching for other random pilots. I couldn't find much, except for the lost pilot to Nickelodeon's 100 Good Deeds of Eddie McDowell, a show about Seth Green bullying a kid and getting turned into a dog who was only able to talk to the last kid he bullied. The pilot had a different cast with no Seth Green, thank God, as the kid being bullied in this version was a young Shia LaBeouf before he starred in Disney's Even Stevens. It's not even listed on his IMDb or anything, so you've heard it here first, possibly. Shia LaBeouf was in the pilot for 100 Good Deeds of Eddie McDowell, a show no one remembers. I used to be a kid, a bad kid, but then I messed with the wrong guy. Eddie, you have failed as a human. You turned me into a dog. Can you believe this? That freak turned me into a dog. You know, when we found out we were delivering everything on the Cartoon Network Ultimate Holiday wish list, we started training, but it's not all ho ho ho. It's hard work. Now, Scooby Doo movie packs, Powerpuff Girl cosmetic sets, no problem, but some of these things take eight of us just to get in the sleigh. Here's a mystery that always remained in my mind until now, and I'm actually researching it the Cartoon Network.com Ultimate Holiday wish list line from 2003. For the price of several thousand dollars, you can have your own room decorated like Dexter's Lab, the Powerpuff Girls, or you can have the desk of Space Ghost, Harvey Birdman's car, and even an Ed, Ed and Eddie gumball machine. But why stop there when there's a four-story tall replica of the kids next door treehouse that goes for one million dollars? Yeah, just go online and buy a real made-to-order five-room kids next door treehouse. Shop the ultimate holiday wish list on CartoonNetwork.com. If you're going to wish, wish big. I tell you, the big man wouldn't be so jolly if he had to lift all his stuff. I myself have seen these on the official website back then, but I just never understood. Was this real or just a joke? Look at this. The rooms are CGI renders, but it could be a model. My web searches have been sparse and have led me to forum posts from that era questioning the logistics of it. I reposted these images up on social media asking if anyone had more info, like maybe someone knew about a millionaire buying it. To my luck, I received a message stating, and I quote, I'm the millionaire who bought all the CGI bedrooms for my hideous Photoshop children. Unquote. I was so gracious a real-life millionaire replied to my post that I contacted him for an interview, but I have yet to receive a reply. Frickin' rude. I couldn't believe the disrespect, so fuck him and fuck his hideous photoshopped children. Actually, don't fuck his children, that's pedophilia. I don't blame you all for assuming these are fake. Look at this car, it looks exactly like a prop you'd find on Aqua Teen Hunger Force. In fact, it's reused from the intro to Harvey Birdman's show. <laughs> And these rooms, again, are just CGI mock-ups. None of these are real, so mystery solved, right? Not quite. If you scroll down, they provide a little too much detail about these products. Details like the treehouse including brand name items such as Panasonic TVs, two Nintendo GameCubes, and a Motorola cordless phone. If this was a joke, why would they involve other brands? They've also typed up info about permits, time it would take for prefabrication. Oh, and let me read this. We do not include fire sprinkler work or fire escapes. So if this thing goes up in flames, up yours, kid. You gotta also love how Harvey Birdman's car includes 27 of Birdman's favorite CDs. These are albums that include Meatloaf, Foreigner, and Space Out, the best of Leonard Nimoy and William Shatner. Double barrel carburetors rush you any place, but you never can find a parking space. Highly illogical. It's all way too much detail for a joke. These products were on the site from late 2003 and disappeared 2005, leading to an error message. Did anyone ever buy them? Who knows? But I refused to end this search. I soon found an old New York Post article about the ultimate holiday wish list. The article tells us the treehouse would have five rooms, be 42 feet in the air, has plumbing, electricity, and phone wires, but no bathrooms. The senior marketing director of Cartoon Network at the time, Greg Hinu, told the New York Post, 
A few people have been interested in buying the treehouse, but will we call them back? For assorted reasons, the funding fell through. This report says only one treehouse will be constructed, meaning this treehouse and likely the other objects don't exist until someone actually pays for their production. Yeah, just go online and buy a real made-to-order five-room kids next door treehouse. A real made-to-order five-room kids next door treehouse. Oh. This explains why none of the store photos are real-life objects, but why sell this? Who would buy it? Maybe this was merely a big marketing stunt just to see who would and make a big deal once someone did. You could imagine the network making a commercial showing the lucky billionaire who bought this for his trust fund kid. But as far as I know, no such commercial exists, nor any news of a sale. It's kind of like that one contest to win the real-life Simpsons house back in 1997. Grab your virtual Simpsons game pieces. If your number matches the number on the screen, you've just won a life-size replica of the Simpsons House, built by Kaufman and Broad. Congratulations! The winner could pick the house, which was pre-built in the Nevada desert, or get the prize money of $75,000. The winner chose the money. Hmm, let me think. Leave my friends and family behind to live in the middle of the desert inside this Technicolor disaster, or $75,000. Yeah, $75,000. That's like the price of two whole medical bills in America. That house was eventually sold and has since then been repainted to a normal color by the biggest bunch of fucking assholes ever, aka the Homeowners Association. It looks even worse now, but hey, it was built. Cartoon Network must have learned not to pre-built these things until a sale is made, and thus, the million dollar treehouse possibly never got to exist. But I won't accept this. Someone must have bought one of these other items. So, there's one last resort tweeting to busy people. To my luck, I got a response from Kids Next Door creator Mr. Warburton. If anyone can cap off this mystery and answer all our questions, it's the creator of the show. He'll save us. So what did Kids Next Door creator Mr. Warburton tweet? This was obviously a trap by the KND. When a rich adult bought the treehouse, the KND immediately spent the money on candy and then sent them a bonsai tree stuffed with junk. Well, thanks for nothing! <sighs> Who cares? We know enough now. I do believe these things were real, but with no evidence of a sale, they probably never got to exist. The dream of living in the K&D treehouse is over. episode of our brand new cartoon cartoon code name kids next door you heard the man yeah we kick butt then at 10 30 we've got a brand new never before seen episode of the power pop girls Ow. so join ed and eddie hi there hi there next friday at seven on cartoon cartoon fridays only on cartoon oh. network <laughs>